What up, everybody? This is Jason. Republicans, Donald Trump, Kellyanne Conway, Steve Bannon, Breitbart News, um, Jeff Sessions, uh, Betsy DeVos, any of these people, Rex Tillerson, they are not victims. America is not a victim of anything. America is not being taken advantage of by other countries, financially or otherwise. In fact, America does that. Uh, Republicans are not victims. They are not victims. Donald Trump is not a victim of a vicious media. Kellyanne Conway is trying to divert. She lied about a terrorist attack in Bowling Green. And she got caught. And she now is blaming the media. It's inciting riots. inciting a mob mentality. The way the media is reporting the, what exactly they're saying coming out of the White House. This is what Donald Trump does. This is what Republicans do. They play the victim. It's PR, Public Relations 101. That's, by the way, Kellyanne Conway, you know, Monica Crowley before she was bounced because for plagiarism. A lot of these other people that are inside the, that are with, you know, Bannon and all these, a lot of these guys were in the media. Now, they were in other things too. They were lawyers, they were uh, Goldman Sachs, whatever, but they were in the media as well. And they, their only source of media that is official to them, that's okay, that's acceptable, is Fox News. Fox News is a propaganda arm for the Republican business first agenda right wing in this country. And it has many satellites. Alex Jones would be one of its satellites, I think. Uh, uh, a lot of the New Age movement that you see that spews this New Age selfishness about we need to rise above and you need to go look inward and all that bullshit. A lot of that is uh, heavily funded by the right wing. Um, they are victimizing us. Okay? Republicans conservatives have been victimizing this country for 30, 40 years, 30 years. They want to eliminate all social programs. They don't want to pay taxes. They don't want to be told how to create jobs because they're not the job creators. The government is, but that doesn't matter because they can just keep saying that they're job creators. They want to increase the military budget. We all know that while claiming, and this is what Donald Trump has done beyond all, I mean, just unbelievable. And he's president. Making America a victim. We're a victim of Mexico. We are a victim. It has nothing to do with the International Monetary Fund or World Bank or our, our fiscal policies towards, towards Mexico. Not at all. Not at all. It has everything to do with Mexican people trying to come into this country and take a jobs away. You're a victim. You're not a victim. Uh, Christians who can't donate money um, and raise money at churches and then take that money and donate it are not victims. You are not a victim if your company can't pollute the sky or dirty up a river because of, because of regulations or a bank who can't leverage itself 40 times what it's worth. So then when it gets in trouble, the United States taxpayer has to bail it out with Dodd-Frank. These are, and the, the, Donald Trump has created, eh, the, not created, but he's using the public relations a tool of turning himself into the victim and the american business these billionaire businessmen are the victims they're the victims of regulation they're the victims of globalism they're, they're, they're the victims of 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 other countries taking advantage he says it regularly he, he it's psycho it's psychopathic it's psychopath i don't know what it is but it's dangerous because donald trump and when anytime donald trump attacks somebody and then they attack him back they're the bully. He did it with Rosie O'Donnell. He did, I mean, I'm just on a base level. He's done it with multiple women. He's done it with, I mean, look at the tweets he sends out about Saturday Night Live. Look at what he tweets. I mean, look, just look what he says about anybody that says anything negative about him at all. He's the victim. She's a terrible woman. Rosie O'Donnell, he wrote, in, he wrote that Rosie O'Donnell was a bully. Donald Trump saying that. He makes himself the victim. So he gets your sympathy. That's it. Donald Trump is not a well man. He needs to be liked. He needs, and he doesn't necessarily care if, I don't think, I, I think he, his base is a very, that's who he wants to like him. He wants these crazy, you know, he wants the right wing to like him. And, but he's turned himself into a victim and he's turned America into a victim. Instead of him, what the truth of the matter is that America is the victimizer. America is the one that takes advantage of other nations. America is the one that invades other countries. America doesn't bring freedom to the world anymore. If it ever did, maybe World War II, maybe. 
But it doesn't do that anymore. It invades nations for geostrategic position and natural resources. That's it. And now there's this new beginning. The Pentagon is trying to create a, a new Cold War, but they really don't have to create a new Cold War with Russia. They can do it with China because that makes more sense. And then they can ease restrictions on China and on Russia, which is what's going to happen with Rex Tillerson as Secretary of State. And Russia will then be able to flood Europe with oil again, ExxonMobil as well. So this and that's what's going. And then you'll par, maybe pair with Russia to go after Iran. Maybe that will be one of your deals. And you'll make. And of course, America is being is when you listen to. I don't know if anyone heard Mattis or anyone heard the press conference uh, about Iran testing ballistic missiles. But they said that were that that. They were, what did Mattis say? I think he said that they were, they don't realize how lucky, how nice Trump was being to them and how he was letting them do it. I, to treat a nation like Iran, which by the way, do you know Iran was called Little America? <laughs> I mean, they were, they were just like us and we turned on them because of this massive oil and we want that oil and control it. And the Iranian people overthrew a, a dictatorship that was put in by America. Well, anyway, I'm digressing, but the... To create to to um, to use Iran, their ballistic missile test, which was not which is not against any sanctions or anything that they were doing, and then to use that as provocation and warn them and tell them how lucky they are that Trump is being so nice and how nice everyone is. The United States sounds like a fourteen-year-old overly macho boy or sixteen-year-old boy who was raised with no father, who has no diplomacy and is bigger than everybody else and is super insecure and knows that I'm just physically bigger than everybody else. So they'll have to do what I want. This will not work on the nat global stage. It will not work. It will not continue to work. You can't treat Australia and Mexico and, and Iran and, um, all of the, uh, Yemen and all of these other, you can't treat, you can't just treat with no diplomacy and be totally business first because other countries will start to react. And like I said, I think we're, I think this idea, this creation of America as a victim, it's so dangerous because it turns us into, it's a complete lie. First of all, it's an absolute 100% Kelly Con, Kellyanne Conway lie. Okay. 100% a lie. And you make that the reality that somehow these, what Muslim terrorists came in from any of the countries that he, that he put the ban on that attacked the country or weren't aided by the FBI in some way, shape or form or by our intelligence services. I mean, or weren't these people weren't American citizens, you know, the Paul shooting, the guy in New Jersey, I, I, the Sarnev brothers were, were, I think we were Chechenian, weren't they or some shit? I mean, were they part of, and they were connected to Graham Fuller, who was a CIA agent. I mean, it's, um, Mind blowing how dishonest it all is, and it wasn't so bad to listen to Obama or even W or even Clinton lie to you and and bomb and and clip. Now America is the victim, and America is slashed is benevolent in its treatment of Iran. You're lucky, Iran, that we're just letting you even exist. You know what that says to me? That says the end of empire. That says the end of the American century. And the misconception, of course, of the American century is not financial, not, not as an influential country, democracy, whatever you want to call it, representative democracy uh, for the world uh, uh, um, of what John Winthrop called um, the, the, the light on the hill. That's what we are. We're the beacon. We were the beacon. We, we, were, we, were, we fought Nazis. We fought tyranny. We fought fascism. We were the number one economy in the world. We, we, people could come to this country pretty easily and, and the American dream worked for them. And America then shed that light throughout the rest of the world and others tried to follow it. That was the American century. It's over. It's been over for a while. And it's the, it's the end of the campfire now where, where, you know, the end of the bonfire where it's completely burned down and there's just the embers that come up and pop and snap. That's where we are right now. And it feels like, Trump has taken us and his entire military industrial complex um, group and all of these get people that are involved, all these conservative people who are liars and white nationalists and pro-military, pro-law and order, pro-business, pro-deregulation. They're exact, they're, they're psychopaths. 
They're self-interested, narcissistic, crazy fucking people who have re- gotten through s- post-modern surrealist America have gotten to the top of their of of their individual companies despite their in- crippling <laughs> should have been crippling mental illness because America encourages people like Rex Tillerson and encourages people like um, Munchen and, and Sessions and they get to positions of incredible power despite being awful, awful, awful human beings on every single level. They're racist, they're mis- misogynist, they want to control, they're Christo-fascists, they want a, a strong foreign policy that basically takes over the world for, a, for a, their business interests. It used to be American business interests, but everything's, you know, multinational corporations. So now it's for their interests before some other country gets there. Or excuse me, from some other corporation gets there. So this idea, again, I'm going to leave you with the idea that making America the victim and playing the victim card over and over and over again is crazy. It's nuts. It's, it's mental illness. And Trump does this constantly because that's how he believes if he says I'm the victim, if I'm being bullied, uh, then it will make him more sympathetic. And this is a PR trick. And doing it to Mexico's taking advantage of us. Japan is taking advantage of us. Um, we're being taken advantage of by so many countries. Australia is taking. What? Are you out of your fucking? Yes, he is. And this um, notion of America being a victim. Trump being a victim, Republicans being victims. They're the ones who have victimized. They're the rapers. They're the destroyers of the environment. They're the builders up of law and order. They're the suppressors of minority votes. They're the stealers of election. They are elections. They are the they are the ones who don't treat us well, who don't want social programs, who don't want to see you do better. That's it. That's what Republicans are. They want to privatize everything to a point because they don't need it. They're rich. They're 1% group, and then that comes down to a 5%, and then you have all the little minions who are getting out of college every, graduating college every year and wanting to be rich, wanting to be famous. And I'll say this, wanting to be rich, wanting to be part of, you know, wanting, coming out of college every single year, more and more greedy pieces of shit, watching the greedy pieces of shit and trying to be like those greedy pieces of shit. And then the whole society changes. And I'll say this. Let me just say this. Milo, what's his name? I can never pronounce his last name. Yenonopoulos or whatever the fuck it is. The gay British blogger, blonde hair, completely shallow, completely narcissistic, completely insane, um, has been recently taking some shit, took some shit at Berkeley, uh, and tries is trying to make it a free speech issue. And here's the problem with that. I agree that... People's voices should be heard. And free speech is not for the speech you like, but it's the speech you don't like. However, it's a two-way street. If you constantly offend people, if you constantly use hate speech, and that's what Milo does, he uses good old-fashioned hate speech. He's starting a, this is the kind of controversy that he's doing. And this is funny to him because it promotes him in his group of psychopathic narcissists, you know, crazies. He's starting a, um, a college fund for white people, for white men. White white people are 75% of the United States. They're the majority in Europe still. The, um, and by the way, I don't care about white people being the majority. I hate having to even point the numbers out because it makes it sound like I somehow am advocating. I don't give a shit. We're all go- we all inevitably will be a bunch of brown motherfuckers rolling around. I mean, that, we're all going to merge with each other. That's what's happening right now. And guys like Milo, for some reason, can't some reason they think that the world isn't run by white males like for some reason a guy like milo who's a white male doesn't look around him and go oh the whole world's run by white males and his opinion is so anti progress and anti human and anti uh, uh, i don't just basically anti human that's what a guy like milo and he does the playing the victim card as well He'll go and he'll say, oh, I can't be led into a university and because they won't let a, a gay man into a university because I'm controversial. He says things that shouldn't allow that. So all the people that don't like him aren't supposed to use their First Amendment rights and protest him. You're not a victim if you choose to go out and attack people like Leslie Jones of Ghostbusters and actually get banned from Twitter for doing it. You're not, it's not okay that you go out and you are so pro-war and you're so anti anyone that isn't white and you think women, 
I, I, self-loathing gay British guy is what Milo is. And he's not a victim. He's a vile creature. And if he's only doing it to be provocative, shame on him even more. You know, people say, well, what, Jason? He's just like, it's like with Donald Trump when Donald Trump got, was getting running. And I would say, are you listening to what he's saying, what he's going to do? And he's done, he's doing those things. And I would hear people say, Jason, he's not going to do those things. He's just saying that to secure his base. <laughs> it's not how Republicans work. They're, they're not bullshitting you. They're not interested in securing their base. That's not, he wasn't worried. He's going to do what he says. He's going to do exactly what he tells you to do. And he's going to push it through quick. And you're going to stand there and go, oh my God. I am so dumb because you did two things. You you Trump Trump supporters did two things. They went with a guy who was telling them exactly what they were going to do, being straightforward. He was not in the system. He was outside the you know bu the Washington bubble, and so you could trust him in what he said, right? Right? I mean, over Hillary Clinton couldn't trust what Hillary Clinton said, but you could trust. What, but then the same people would say, "But you know what? He's not going to do what he says he's going to. What he's doing? He's not going to suppress women. He's not going to put a try to get a guy who's anti Roe v. Wade on the Supreme Court. Oh, whoops. Uh, he's not going to put a wall up to Mexico. That's just talk. Oh, whoops. Uh, he's not going to have a, any kind of ban on any Muslims from any country anywhere. Oh, whoops. Uh, I mean, he's not going to slash Dodd Frank and some of these. Oh, whoops. That's he's not going to put Rick Perry in the energy department. Oh, whoops. Scott Pruitt's not going to. Oh, whoops. He certainly wouldn't put Exxon Mobil in head of our uh, foreign. Oh, whoops. <laughs> See what I'm saying, folks? So I always wondered about the Trump people that were supporting him. They always had two contradictory things in their mind. You know what Ayn Rand said about how, about being a critical thinker is not having two contradictory thoughts in your mind at the same time. And Republicans do it constantly. Um, so, um, again, I'll just leave you. Thank you for listening. And remember, folks, America is not a victim. America is the victimizer. America is the is the rapist outside the fucking outside the fucking bathrooms at the amusement park waiting for waiting for innocent countries to come out <laughs> that's what america is america is not the fucking victim donald trump is not the victim the republicans are not a victim kellyanne conway is not a victim the Koch brothers are not a victim these capitalist scumbags who are destroying they are the perpetrators of violence against not only the earth but human beings economically socially militarily existentially they are the enemies. They are the ones that should be blamed. They, they are not victims. Thank you for listening.